Invasion. That wasn't even me right then, guys. Um, but hello, this is the Was It Good Though podcast. Uh, podcast we review movies, TV shows. Uh, I am one of your hosts. I am Jason. I am joined here with my sister Jazz. How you doing today? I am well, feeling good, feeling in my skin. That's I, I hope right so. We live. We <laughs> what they say to the mission is to live home in our skin. That, that's the mission. Right? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's the mission. But if you haven't noticed or don't notice yet, we are discussing Secret Invasion. But this is episode two. Um, what uh, promises will be discussing promises, and this will be an open format. So, um, but we will go over the full episode. It will be kind of out of order, just based on different things or just whatever we discussing um, into that moment. But man, they're they're, they're really they're really giving us something right now. Um, these last two episodes have been really heavy. How you feeling so far? I'm feeling great. Like I didn't, I wasn't expecting the greatness from episode one, but I definitely wasn't expecting it. Episode two to be at such a high level that it was like, it was way better than episode one and the script and it, it you know, if you listen to this pod, you know, Jazz love a good script in a movie or a she show. I, I have so much appreciation. And Samuel L. Jackson, my God, did I, were you expecting him to bring this type of talent, type of range, type of performance to this series already in episode two? Uh, we needed it. We really needed it. This was, you know, we... Recently, they had our Black Thing episode, so this was these, these episodes. This episode was super black. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, it was there, and it, it felt it. It was, it was super familiar uh, with it. So even for someone who wasn't familiar, it was a. I feel like it was a nice attention grab, especially with that that scene on the train between him and Talos, just being able to. Because he he slow poked it, but I I knew I felt like I knew where he was going yeah. with the conversation just off the rip. Because uh, it's been a, a reoccurring thing. You get one lie. That, that's been a reoccurring thing with Fury, at least these last two episodes. Everybody right. gets one. So it gives you a chance before he before he, he get gets in your ass. But, he yeah. does. I mean, I'm not going to lie. When he was leading up to where he was going, it had me feeling like I was on the train with a parent where they was just <laughs> starting a conversation with me. And the conversation was leading down a... Jazz, you done got caught doing some shit you should not have done. Mm. That's that's what that scene felt like to me. I was like, tell us, uh, my nigga, you might need to say you need to go to the bathroom, <laughs> swim in somebody else, and get off that shit. Because <laughs> he's about to go in on you. But I'm curious um, how this episode started. Because we get that flashback. We actually get two flashbacks in the opening of this episode. And mm -hmm. so I think the first flashback, ninety nine, excuse me, 1995, was just a, all right, we're going to take clips from Captain Marvel. This is your, where we pretty much, it was like your recap for anybody who did not see Captain Marvel. They was like, all right, we're going to give y'all about 45 seconds of what happened in there and to reference back to it. Uh, how did you feel about that flashback? Uh, I, I mean, I remember it. Because that's, that's, you know, I think I, the previous episode I did ask you had Talos ever taken a human's, like a human's form, but right. in that previous movie, I think he was a woman. <laughs> he kind of told the guy, you can't, you can't use this body. I'm already using it. So pick another one. Um, oh, when so, they got off the beach. Off the beach. Yeah. So I like, I, I were they killing the people at that point? Like, I don't know if they were killing them or they were just knocking them out and taking I, their skin, but. Yeah. I think they was just knocking them out. Cause I think their bodies was probably well, actually, when we saw them in Captain Marvel, once they arrived to the beach, they just saw people from a distance and took their faces. So those gotcha. people were still out there enjoying the beach. Just gotcha. imagine you looking from a distance and you see some shit. Well, we already know how you feel about clones. <laughs> I, I remember. <laughs> but <laughs> So you see something from a distance, you just like... Like, they wasn't knocking them out or taking them like you see... Um, graphics people doing mm -hmm. so they was a little sloppy in uh captain marvel with it so i mean you know that was new to the earth so they was just sure. trying to i guess get accustomed to it uh but then we kind of we flash forward two years 
Um, it's 97. Uh, we we kind of get a, a backstory um, of Gravit. Typ- typical tragic backstory. Parents have been killed. You know, he had to flee from the country uh, or their, 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 their planet, their home planet, which is kind of made me think of uh, Rocket, Rocket Raccoon. Mm. Um, in that situation with him, how his people died, he had to try to flee uh, for the, the high evolution there. Uh, and I guess with this scene here, with them being in the room, we, we find out the promise that was given or that was told by Fury, which it keeps getting referenced back to first episode, even this episode is referenced too. Um, I guess within that, although the scrolls, the majority of the scrolls, they agreed, it seemed like even then, Gravik was kind of apprehensive to agree to the terms. How you feeling about how? What did you think of that scene? I mean, it kind of and I believe I mentioned this, and we mentioned it a few times in our past episodes, the villain having their being created and molded based off of the hero they'll be going against. Mm-hmm. Not saying like this is Fury's arch nemesis, because let's be realistic, but you kind of see the origins of it. Like Fury came to him, you know, talking to him, and he was just like, I'm sorry to hear about your parents. And he was like, they died brilliantly, which... All right, I'm glad your parents went out like thugs. That's what's up. Um, okay. But I appreciated this origin story because you also see how Gravik and um Gaia has known each other for so long because in the first episode, I thought she was just a creep, you know, looking from a distance, trying to peep eyes at her. <laughs> but in this, you see they they were both kids that are, you know, around the same, I guess, scroll age. Gotcha. And so they were very familiar with each other. And so, which also lets you think, okay, he obviously has a lot of trust in her. Or one would assume, I don't trust nobody. But um, no, nah, like when they were talking about the promise, I was just like, well, Fury, you basically said it right here. And you had all these people on your side. And then we also are introduced to a scroll. We don't get her name, but we see her and Fury are uh, familiar and we find out who she is at the end of this episode. Uh, I knew she was black when I heard her voice. She was the oh, one who shit. introduced. That was her. Uh, yes, I believe introduced so. Grab it. Grab it. Yeah, grab okay. it to Fury. So okay. I was just like, Fury, you've been dipping, you know, slaying out with it with the uh, scrolls. Like, okay. The previous episode, he did say, "I've seen prettier scrolls, and you're not one of them." So that's he did. Nice, so that's so maybe that's what he was referring to. I mean, she was giving off black vibes when she was green. <laughs> and so the fact that Fury was like, I black need vibes you to be a black. Green. She, go look, come on. You think he, you think he found a woman on Earth who was like, hey, be her. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Now that's, I, you know what? I wouldn't put it past him. Hey, I wouldn't put it past that's, him. That's, that's kind of wild. It is. But this uh, this scene showed us a lot. It definitely showed us a lot and how Gravik um, has been there for so long. And of course, you get his origin story. But now we are in present day. And I like how they brought us back to the aftermath of the bomb mm-hmm. going off. And you get a different angle after uh, Hill was murdered. So you kind of see uh, like who scooped up um, who scooped up Fury, but also Okay, with this scene, we see Gravik, and then we see um, Gaia. Did she know the bomb was going to go off? Because at one scene, she looked confused and concerned. The other one, she's like, all right, let's go ahead and find the car. I don't know if she knew how much com- uh, commotion it was going to be. Because remember, Gaia, I think she knew there was three bombs, but Gaia also was only a decoy, which I you know, I feel like she knew. Her, her, her situation is going to be super captain uh captain america super winter Bucky. soldier like yeah winter soldier oh. like because it's just like i i don't know but it's like why would you go along with it but again just depending on the more we know about graphic shit i don't know if she had a choice yeah and then i'm still thinking like did he know that she went to go speak to her dad i just i think i think he know which the conversation in the car kind of he makes it seem as if he didn't know what was going on? She was like, "How do you? How did you know Fury was gonna be there? Like, yeah, that nigga knew something. Like, somebody was around enough 
but it also, you know, he's going to be my number two now. Uh, Fury's my number two on this scroll list because, I mean, so considering we're following him, it would be kind of crazy for them to twist it like he's a scroll. But at the same exact time, Fury being there, it feels like a ploy to a play onto Fury at the same exact time. So whether he was there or not, I feel like Grobic probably would have switched into him to make it appear as if he was there to blame somebody in that situation, which we see what that led to due to him being around in that situation, which goes back to my number one suspect of fuck that nigga uh, <laughs> with Rody. Yeah, Rody. Uh, I think Rody is a scroll. It's so hard. It's so hard. It's so I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, this episode kind of made me feel a little bit differently about it. Um, because considering that Fury just left the earth, uh, doesn't seem like nobody was informed that he was making this decision or he made this decision. He just did it, and now people don't know if he's going rogue or what's going on. But him being gone for as long as he have, dealing with the people that now he's saying are invading the earth, what would you do? How how would you feel about that? Would would you trust this person at this point? If I was Rhodey? Yeah, like would you, you I mean, gonna... it definitely seems like it's a lot of pressure on him if it really is Rhodey. Mm-hmm. It's just like a lot of his mannerisms and everything seems a lot different than what we're normally used to seeing from mm-hmm. him. But let's keep it real. He shouldn't be the same character he was in Iron Man 2 that he is in Secret Invasion. That's that's like zero character development. And so you see he's a lot closer to the president. He's mm-hmm. lost a lot and lived through a lot because Rhodey was also killed in the blimp. So, I mean, it's like everybody, of course, handled it differently. It's just Fury bounced and him bouncing affected an entire species, which caused that species to want to turn on the humans that they thought was going to help them find their new home. And so Rhodey knew about them already. He just didn't probably take them serious, but I can kind of understand his views a little bit, but it's just ah. like when he was talking to like our allies, Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, I'm like, nah, this either he is just completely fed up (laughs) because <laughs> hey. i'm like yo this nigga's like on some no nonsense he's like look the president ain't got time for y'all that's why i'm here we only got remorse but y'all can figure y'all own shit out and remember we are the most powerful well equipped country in the world you don't drop no shit like that in front of a bunch of people that's about to be on the side of a country that you kind of are on odds with which is russia you know, mm-hmm. so I'm just like, I just, I just, I don't know. Yeah, that was a, uh, I don't know. Like I said, that's, that's a tough situation to be in, but then, you know, you have the, the conversation where we finally get them in the room together. Um, and they're just, man, uh, a lot of, a lot of gems was dropped uh, within that. And this is, that's, that's a real conversation though, Jess. Like that's a real conversation you would have with, you know, someone you may consider a brother. For real, somebody right. may consider a sister or family member because he was just um Sam situation was, you know, somebody like us are in position, give me a break. And Rody's stance on that is, wow, yes, you're right. Somebody by position, I should give you a break, but I don't want to give somebody, just anybody, a chance to make this situation. Because at this point, like you say, I don't know you. I don't know your intentions. I don't know what you're doing. And to me, you look mediocre. Yeah, that I'm not gonna lie. So between this scene with him and Rhodey and the scene with him and Talos, we got to get back to that one too because it was we, that was a good that which, was a, a real conversation. Which one do you think hit the hardest? Like, which one do you think was just amazing? Now I say both of them. Oh my I god! Thought was I, some ten. They're, they're doing some acting in this. Yeah, they are series. And it's we and it's I appreciate it because it's just like you had two major scenes. Doesn't have to be action. You got serious dialogue. Mm-hmm. Two in one episode, and these episodes are like fifty-seven minutes. Well, two. this one was. You mean two was with Sam? Because shit, I, I I count about three or four more conversations that was. <laughs> so we're not we're gonna get to Sonya. Sonya was one too. But we we gonna get to that. I'm talking that about the, the council. The council conversation was deep oh to my me too. 
God, the dog. Com- yeah. <laughs> all right, let's. We got to touch on all of this, so let's go ahead and go back to the train. Let's I go forgot. to the train. Yeah, we go to the train. Um, I was going. You remember? I, I can't. I don't know if you remember. Like, um, I used to enjoy car rides when I was younger, mm-hmm. like with the family. Like I said, when we was in the car, um, we used to play. Like I said, we used to play bingo. So we see a car, we'd be like, hey, you got to call out how many yellow cards you see out. So you say a bingo at the end, you know, whatever. You just, it's just a little competitive game. It's whatever. Right. But um, he said, tell me something I don't know. And kind of like you said in the beginning of this, it was just, you can tell there was a buildup of tell me something I don't know. Because it's like, oh, shit. So he, you already know where the conversation is going. And I don't know if it's Talos being from a different earth. I mean, not different earth, from out of space. Or his lack of being around just human beings, if he even felt the energy that was coming. But that's, maybe that's the, is it, is it, is the word colloquialism? Collo- I don't, no, that's not the word, colloquialism. That's not the word, but it may have, it may just be that, I don't know if it's, if that's just being black, we understand the severity of the conversation that's about to happen. I think it's the black energy. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. That's what I think it was. Like Man. the buildup of him talking about with him and his family and that they had to sit in the colors only car section. Like the, they had to bring their own chicken because they couldn't walk around. I know some would probably see this scene and be like, okay, Marvel's being woke again. That's not woke. That is a man in his fifties or sixties talking about an experience. How old is Fury? Oh, I don't know how old he is in the show, but Oh, I'm like, why you put your head like I'm like she is Sam. So he gotta be at least he gotta be at least 60 or 70, I'm thinking. Right. So yeah, but for this show, we're gonna knock it down 10 years. So we're gonna <laughs> say 50 or 60. So you have a black gentleman right. that is about 50 or 60 years old. He's not talking about anything woke. He's talking about his childhood and his experiences. Those are just facts, and those are things people live through. Mm-hmm. So I know it's gonna be a few folks that's gonna be like, oh, they trying to be woke again. No. That's just someone's experience, and it's a lot of people out here with that experience. But they take a lot of the stuff out of school, so niggas don't learn shit, so they don't realize that shit. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna pick it back on that point real quick before I let you get into it. But yes, that's exactly what happens. Like people don't realize, like our grandparents, they right. was out there with Martin Luther King. That was they were alive during the Jim Crow era, and my grandparents aren't really old. Like they're they're in their seventies. But I'm just saying, like just. They they were here. So right. you go back to your point. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, you're good. But I think I was pretty much finished. But it's just like those kind of things. And like there were some lines where I was just like, all right. And it was probably just one line that was said during the conversation between him and Rody. But I think like this scene was so impactful. And I'm just like, whoever wrote this dialogue, and it might have been Samuel L. Jackson that said, I'm bringing my own shit to this scene, because that <laughs> seems like the energy he would definitely do. I absolutely loved it. I mm-hmm. loved it so much. I was Because it felt so authentic. You it know did. what I mean? It did. I, wa- I watched a, um, a clip. It was a clip on Twitter where he was talking to Howard Stern. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Uh, he was kind of telling him to watch the show and, you know, he was like, he's not really into stuff like that because it kind of feels kitty. And he was like, well, he said, well, he mentioned anime. He was like, anime is one of the most profound things out right now and the, the writing that they have in them is really huge. And I feel like if you watched it, you would really be into it. And he just said what anime he's into. So it kind of almost felt the same, like you kinda, like you said, Sam bringing his energy, his own writing to the character. That's ex- the way he told him he didn't tell him off but he you know it's just it just came up like sam he's just talking to him and he just you know he told him um but within this conversation we find out that a million scrolls jazz we asked how many people it was and i it was you know I, how many people like j- just just ballpark figure how many did you think was in was here i mean i thought like maybe 200 2500 that's probably you know that's only ones that's here. And they just minding their business. You don't know they scrolls. When this man said a million, I said, oh, so you brought everybody to the cookout. And ain't tell nobody. But I mean, <laughs> realistically, do you think Talos was wrong? And I don't mean wrong for not telling Fury. I mean wrong for sending that distress signal up. Y'all can come through and y'all can stay. I don't. 
I don't. That's a that's a that would be a, that would be a tough situation to be the leader, um, and then have to to tell your people, hey, you you got to figure it out. Like that's not for right. Me. As the leader, my job is to protect y'all. Me and this man said we got y'all back. You got blipped, and when you came back, you left us no word, nothing. Yeah. So I un I understood both sides of it. So I don't, but like I said, I, but I also get Fury just being blindsided with that information. But I don't know why Fury didn't already have that conversation on the same on the flip side of that. But it's only I don't. I, it's only been a date, so I don't know why he would have had that conversation at the same time. Yeah, and also like I did a rewatch of the first episode, and uh, when Talos and Fury got back together, and they were talking about that plant that was from their uh, their work their planet, and he was just like his wife planted it and it's starting to, uh, I guess, intertwine with the soil and it's starting to grow. And uh, Fury was like, yeah, that's, you know, similar to what you believe, you know, the scrolls, if they were to come to earth, he was like, and I still believe that. Like his, his old thing is like, he envisioned humans and scrolls living on earth, peaceful and all of that. But reality, reality <laughs> which, oh my God. <laughs> Yo, clearly they gave these scrolls some some Martin Luther King speeches once he made it to America. Because you know I mean, what? made it to Earth. I keep saying America. This is Earth. They're not from the Earth, the planet at all. We, they are aliens. Are we not even in the states in this show? Like we in Russia? Yeah, yeah. But I, he got hit with a dose of reality from Fury in this. Like, and I tried to get a few of the lines because I was like, oh my god, I gotta make sure I repeat these. <laughs> I want you to do it. I got this, it, but I want you to see it. Uh, this man was just like, um, well, at first, when uh, Talos was just like, you left. What were we supposed to do? Like, we supposed to be your, like, errand boys and all of that? Like, nah. And Fury was like, the host gets to set the terms of the visitation. I said, God, Lord. <laughs> hey, Jason, I clutched my pearls and I didn't even have any on my nigga. I said, <laughs> And Is like that what they, mean? they mean like they like they grab oh shit I've never enough plus my pearls? mind I always my mind went another place the yeah. other per Damn. okay okay you know what you got it you continue continue <laughs> we go we gonna try to stay on the geek energy today <laughs> you know like the old ladies when they clutch their pearls they get scared. he did now Bruce Mama she did though okay continue oh I don't I don't know where that was going uh. Is there? Did I miss a joke? Bruce Wayne, I, Mama lost her pearls because she died. She clutched them, but that was the last time. <laughs> I thought he took them off her neck. I don't know. They change it every story, but they get <laughs> they, they be on the ground. <laughs> they, they end up dead every time. <laughs> but another scene, he was um, another line when Talos was just like, "I was, you know, hoping we could just come stay with y'all, come come live with y'all, you know, like just hang out." permanently and then fury was like humans can't even coexist with each other and i'm sitting here like thank you because humans are fucking trash and you try to come to our planet do you i'm just sitting here like they must have didn't get the channel like three years ago in the world when covid hit how we was just like humans ain't got no sense it's the earth is ghetto and everybody was like the aliens looking at us like nah we can't fuck with earth like i'm mm -hmm. assuming the scrolls didn't have that channel mm -mm. Cause I'm like Talos, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing, boo? Like, mm -hmm. do you not realize humans are crazy? And then the fact that he also said he was like, we've been at war with each other since we could walk upright. Mm. A human wrote this, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, they they speaking. They speaking. Was there was there any lies told? Nah. There were, I mean, so I mean, just truthfully, there was there weren't any on both sides being told, but it was within that Talos. That's a conversation you really need to have with Fury. Like that wasn't a thing. You you can't, you know, it may come up harsh, like Fury said. Like I get to make the terms of you being here, but it's you know, although you get to make the terms, Fury, you also made a promise, and people are holding hold on to that word. That you didn't hold that that you didn't uphold. So we almost thirty years. Well, it's actually in the in Marvel it is thirty years because they're like in twenty twenty five. 
in these shows. Right. So it's been 30 years and you've done nothing but run at this point. So question. Mm -hmm. If they're in 2025, does that mean they think that Kane's Dynasty is dropping next year, but for us, that shit is dropping in like three to four years? Yes, Jazz. Dang shit. All right, go ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he, you know, Fury, I don't know when he said, he, he, he told me, you lost your reptilian ass mind. <laughs> That's, hey. nobody wrote that that was Sam we should play a game of like Sam did that that was Sam that was not in the script yeah no um, I mean he, it, it, was, it was it was a cold blooded cold blooded scene cold blooded scene it was but I'm curious and do you think that they might give us a scene of like or we don't we don't even know like the time difference or how many years it was from when Fury came back from the blip like everybody else and then when he went to space. Like how many years passed between that? Because if he came back on a Wednesday and then he went to space on Friday, I would be mad too. And I would tell my folks to come through too. Cause he even said, I don't th I didn't know you were coming back. He was like, you knew how to get in contact with me. But see, with Talos being able to get in touch with Fury, that just means he knew Fury would not say be cool with a million scrolls coming to Earth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's 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 definitely one of those things where you could have you could have made this situation a better situation. He didn't like yeah. he could. I mean, the open communication would have made it probably would have made that a lot better. It's one of those things where it's just like. Deal with the concept. What is the quote you say? Do it now, then apologize later. Uh, ask for, uh, don't ask for permission. Ask for for, for forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, that's, that yeah that's that's pretty much. But he told him, you know, you know what? This this town car is even looking a little too big for the boat. This uh, train car looking a little too big. That go your stop and kick this man out of his train car. He did, bitch. Him. I would have had to put hands and feet on Fury at that point because he, he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't take Talo. What you fighting him for? You need his help, and nothing he said was wrong. He just called you out on your shit. Granted, <laughs> it wasn't really your shit because a lot of people probably would have done the same thing for for their citizens as well. So to, to kick me out though, I mean, look, y'all need space, and there wasn't another car that you could sit in. So it was best you get off the train. And he was walking the rest of the episode. I'm like, damn, you ain't getting no Uber? That's crazy. But I mean, he might not have no money. I'm, I'm sure he did. He done stole some money between now and when Fury came back. I, I would done, hope so. He done brought a whole a whole gang of people to the to the uh, to the place. So yeah, now I he, guess he that would be. Money. But I'm curious to how many of those people no longer ha are like allies to him. They probably rolling with Gravit. Oh, a lot. Plenty. I wonder how many are allies with him. You mean with Talos? Yeah, now I'm sitting here like, maybe you shouldn't have let them niggas come to the cookout. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was it was all good until it wasn't, you know what I mean? And as far as as far as when it comes to Fury, the last known occurrence of Fury being here was when he was at Tony's funeral. Because he hasn't he hasn't appeared again outside of uh, which I know is far from home. It wasn't homecoming. At the end of that, you see Fury in the space station. <clears throat> right. Did That's somebody correct you on that? No, nah, I'm correcting myself. Oh, okay. Just making sure. I, I was saying homecoming previously. It was far from home. The second movie in the Spider Man trilogy. Um, but this one, I mean, this this episode was kind of a hard one for Fury. Um, so, you know, even after this conversation, he has to go talk to Miss Elizabeth. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Elizabeth Hill, <clears throat> Maria's mother. Uh, so, yeah, she up out of here. How you feeling about that? I know you, you sent me the, the message when she was, when she, the I mean, actor, was acting up talking about it. But. I, I wasn't mad at it. And not that I didn't like her character. It was definitely a huge death to mm -hmm. get at the, on the first episode. Because it's just like, damn, you think about how many... Like, she's been there since Avengers. Wasn't she there in, um, what, Captain America? Like, how far back does she go? Because I feel like her and Coulson was, like, the two people that was definitely rolling with Fury that entire time. But 
I mean, she's been there for a while, so she, it's a major death. But I feel like with their line of work, people don't survive. There's going to be some deaths. There's going to be some tragic um, casualties. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad it didn't turn out she was a scroll. I'm glad that even though it is said that sis is out of here, but it's just, it means that they killing people off. And you know how I feel about that. Everybody does not need to survive. And I think you had to have her die for Fury to get to where he used to be or to drive him or for him to pretty much feel like he's alone and isolated. Because if you think about it, he ain't got nobody in his corner outside of Bay. Because Rhodey gone. He done got fired, lost his job. He done got in a damn argument with Talos, who's about to be on a suicide mission trying to link up with Gravik. But, you know, it is what it is, priorities. So he's kind of isolated. You think he still got that Captain Marvel beeper? Hell no, that shit got gone in uh, Infinity War. Yeah, nah, he, he definitely ain't got that. I think he has a way of contacting her if he needs it. But, I mean, within that conversation with Throaty, he said he wasn't um, trying to involve the Avengers in case they stole their DNA, which comes up in this episode as well. So, yeah, I was curious about that. And I'm... um. I wonder what your thoughts was on it because I wasn't a hundred percent sure oh, yeah, what they yeah, were yeah. doing, where they were going. Oh yeah. Okay, they, I'm, um, I'm gonna leave. Yeah, I'm gonna leave gonna, that in your hands. Gonna get so um, but yeah, no, you know, I see. So I mean, you kind of touched on it because I do see a lot of people are really upset about Maria dying. Like they're pissed off. They feel like the the person wasn't wasn't treated fairly. Um, she's been with us since 2012 because she was um. Avengers was the first movie she appeared in. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, man, I mean, unfortunately, it happens. I mean, we lose people. We lost Coulson in Avengers. Um, yep. So, we did. He did come back for the, the other movie uh, for Captain America. Not Captain America, but Captain Marvel. He came back for Captain Marvel, but it was, of course, that was years before. Uh, there was a spinoff show, which allegedly this show is supposed to tie back into. Hopefully, I was a big fan of that show. Uh, so, hopefully, we bring some people from. Um, Agent of Shield. Shield. Agent of Shield. Yeah, it'd be dope for them to bring that back. Um, what I was going to get into next was Gravik. Gravik and um and Gaia. <clears throat> uh, she kind of almost like his his little Aaron, Aaron girl to a certain extent, right? It's like you working at a job and you've been there for like twenty five years and you never got <laughs> like promoted. <laughs> You still running to get people's coffee. And she's like, sis, are you not thinking about moving up the ladder in your cult? Like, what is happening? Like, I'm just... In your cult? Like, what are you doing? I mean, uh, I don't know how you how you move ahead in cults, but typically it ain't... It ain't, it ain't the, the, maybe not Look, the funnest way. I hey, know. you probably got to take some people out the game. Well, some, but some how time. committed are you? You got to be committed if you're joining a cult. I mean, that's what the cult documentaries say. <laughs> like, I'm not the one. <laughs> Just saying. In too deep. Uh, like, uh, what's that? Was it Omar Epps, right? It's not Makai Pfeiffer. Actually, it's it Omar. is Omar Epps and L. Cool J, right? Yeah, I think Kanye West, he said, in too deep, like Makai Pfeiffer. Like, I was like, wait, <laughs> that's not correct, brother. Yeah, Makai Pfeiffer? No. no. That's not him. Nah. Yeah, I don't know why he said that, but he, he definitely said it. Uh, so we, we have this, this meeting with the council. So it's like, I, I believe Gravik understands Gaia's position, and I do think he knows, well, let me not say no. I believe he, be, I don't believe he trusts anybody. So I feel like he keeps people at a distance, but he can keep them to a certain a certain distance within that. So he kind of makes her feel important by saying, hey, he gives her his gun and says, put two between his eyes if I'm not out in an hour. I still, that would not have made me feel important. Because she thought she was about to go in that room. And he was like, yeah, no, nah, just hold my gun. Like, and you out there sitting in a waiting room like you waiting for a loved one that's getting a procedure done. Danny had no snacks for sis. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, you his Uber. You his free <clears throat> Uber driver. But. Yeah. Um, this scene this, where we see, uh, I was at the book, this, this scene where we see the council uh, they do come up. Well, there was in the pre. There was in a, a, a scene previously. Um, after the commotion, you see the news. The news station, the news channel. And you see all the different people. And they're just showing you the power, the influence, where they are, 
how high they are in all these different positions. So, yeah, we can play from all different sides of they're they're playing a a, a one dimensional chess game and they're controlling all they're trying to control every piece to be able to dictate what happens like i said we got secretary generals we have prime ministers the commander of the nato just how you when you when you see how big or how influential these people are over the earth how are you what what what, what what's your mindset or what, what are you looking at in- they're playing the game right that's what you're like that's what you're supposed to do that's what you need to do if this is if your plan is to pretty much take this planet and make it your own make it your new home that's what you're supposed to do. But like, I'm not going to lie. Like when he got into this room, I was sitting here like, so you rolling with the leaders of the nation, my nigga? Like, who, what you doing? I didn't even think they were scrolls. You didn't think, and, did you? <laughs> Man, listen, but to be fair, to be fair, when I watch this show, it's like the sun ain't even out yet. It's like 6.30, 7 o'clock. Oh yeah, I was at 4 o'clock in the morning watching. Jason. You should have let me live with, okay, I understand that jazz. Here you go, nigga, don't matter. I'll be up at four. Like, I just anyway. woke up. I just woke up. See, you, we, we a little bit different. See, I woke up, for me, you woke up to, well, you just wake up at that time. So I, you know. Nigga, I have to go to work. Don't do that. Don't pull that jazz. Just wake up at six like an old lady. No. I said four. Well, I don't wake up at four. Nigga, you, oh, you're supposed to be. You wake up at four. I don't wake up at four. <laughs> I wake up at five and I go to work at six. Got you. So, oh, I'm so, okay. So my time is that time. Got you. Exactly. Right. Got you. But anyway, when I was home, when I was looking at my rewatch, I was just like, yeah, you shouldn't realize they were scrolls. But at the time, six thirty, seven <laughs> o'clock, I didn't know. So let me just enjoy <laughs> the show. But I didn't realize it till he started speaking school language. And I said, oh, shit. I said, so all of these leaders are aliens? And I was just like, yikes. Like I said in our last episode, we're in danger. The humans are in danger. <laughs> like, yeah. But, and you ain't got no heroes. Or you got Fury, but I mean, that's a, <clears throat> that's a good hero to have, but like, he ain't no metahuman. But is it, is it? That's DC. I know. What are they called in this world? I thought metahuman was any type of human creature that has like superpowers. Um, I mean, we can we can we can say that because I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know what they call them. What the people niggas with powers on this one? I mean, so you got like super soldiers. You got you know. It's, I mean, uh, but super soldiers uh, as, as can't guardian, fly. As guardian, you got Iron Man. It's just a nigga with suit suit yeah, suit of right. armor. Yeah, so I'm just saying they. So what is, I'm mutant. Mutant. That's like, what it yeah, is. Like, they like okay. Yeah, you got mutant, inhuman. As well, but I think the only thing we're going with right now is mutant. I mean, okay. you have an inhuman in Doctor Strange, but I don't know if that counts. So and we'll then see. you got a mutant in Kamala, since Kamala is closer to the secret invasion. She got mutated. She got mutated yeah. in the going so, through the thing. All right, mutant. So this thing, I was just like, wow. But I know you definitely wanted to discuss the comparison of when you had the leader in NATO, was just like, he said, I'm not listening to no dog or I'd rather be human than a dog. And mm. then you get this entire speech. It's not even a speech. It's more of a reading. That's what it was. Gabrick yeah, read is. the hell out of them. <laughs> Can you imagine someone reading you the way that he did and you sit there silent and he ain't got no weapon on him? I would have like, put one in his head immediately. It's like you said, Jazz, when you said co leader, what can you say? You right. <laughs> but I feel like if I was if you are a major leader like them nah I would think their level in his well no they're all working together and he's like a new member on their council so the rest of them have already been there basically mm-hmm. he should not be at a higher level than them but obviously prior to when they made him the general or whatever mm-hmm. but before a dude got chopped in the throat <laughs> Which, oh my God, that throat chop. Completely loved it. Whoever's idea that was, shout out to you. It was appreciated by Jazz. But the scene comparing the dog, Jason. <clears throat> yeah, nah, that was, um, see, there, there had, there's either there's another show or another movie where people are like invading 
earth and they're t- they're sh- they're shape shifting. They're like you living as if you're these people and you're not them. You got to remember where you actually come from. Like what what the goal that we're having. You're looking to just inhabit this as these people, and that's almost like what Fury said. He said, "My promise is to find y'all home, but y'all got to live as a human throughout this process until I figure it out." So it's almost you know some of them are still almost holding on to that hope but him it's already turned his, it's turned into resentment for gravity and you know like you said the dude from nato he mentions uh he rather live as a human as a dog and then gravel was like i don't, I don't like dogs <laughs> <laughs> he said they're not hypocrites they don't lie um uh, you know they don't lock people up they don't pimp they don't poison they don't degrade their own habitat and then that's what people was like. I mean, they got a point. And they got a point. They didn't lie, y'all. <laughs> I don't. I didn't see a lie. I didn't hear a lie. Nah, nah. Uh, yeah, we. You know, and it almost. But Gravit killed two thousand people in this attack as well. So I don't. So with at that point, you either have to ride with him or kill him because it's it's almost like Killmonger. Killmonger had did too much for them to try to rehabilitate him. This isn't a um this this isn't that type of moment. Some people just can't be. Like Bucky, he was at least brainwashed. Gravik has just turned into this just based on everything that's been going on, and how he feels about everything that's going on. Um, I, love, I love that you brought up Killmonger because oh my goodness, can you imagine those two teaming up? <laughs> 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 like, can you just imagine? Like that would be. You think, you think Killmonger would have killed? I think Killmonger would have killed him though. I don't like, think a- it after after he would have got what he needed. After for sure, but then it's one of those things to where it's just like, hell, I think Gravit would have killed Killmonger. Oh man, I, that's, that's a that's a tough one. It that's is. Tough one. He's loyal. I mean, I, he's kind of. I mean, I feel like he may be loyal. I don't know. We will talk about who? it because the. Um, Grab it to a certain extent. I feel like he loyal. You don't think so? No, I think he just he has a cause that he's loyal to, and he's not loyal to a single person. Ooh, you're right. Shit, he did say he said it's not me. I'm loyal to the yeah. mission. I think that's I think that's his only thing. But the thing with someone that's like that that makes him dangerous is at what point do they switch their I guess path and say, no, that this is the new mission or this is that mission to where to try to shift it to where it makes sense to them. And they try to maybe like gaslight or lie to their followers. Mm-hmm. And normally people in that situation, when you follow somebody down one path, you damn sure gonna follow them down five more. Cause you like, I mean it wasn't that bad. He fed us. He gave us a head uh, a bed to sleep in. Mm-hmm. Like because his people loved him. They he he wasn't successful or powerful off of fear, which is what a lot of the Marvel villains are. Who are you referring to right now? Gravik. Gotcha. I'm talking about gotcha. Gravik this entire I'm with time. You. I'm with you from But like his people, his followers loved him. This Love. man killed, like you said, two thousand people, and they said men, women, and children. He immediately said, "Fuck them kids." In episode one, Jason. I mean. Now, I'm going to ask you this, like, out of all the villains, because you've watched all of the Marvel series, where is Gravik at for you? Like, just the villains in the series. Um, is he at the top? I mean, it's a, it's a nice he's, amount. I mean, he, he, he's he been the mo- he may be the most villainous. I mean, outside of people, you have um, Hela. Hela didn't care. She was going through in the series. people up. Oh, None in the TV the shows, TV shows, yeah, TV, TV shows, shows, TV shows. Um, in the TV shows, yeah, got it. I mean, he has to be. Um, I mean, I mean so you, you have, have you have K- what? What Carrie is that her name from the Flag Smashers? Yeah, Carly, Carly, Carly. Like she, you, yeah, you had Carly, and then you had um, you had Ethan Hawke from Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. He had a cult. Everybody got a cult, but <laughs> and then of course you got Wanda slash Agatha, but. They definitely want yeah, division nah. at all. Nothing yeah. close to this. And yeah. I mean, maybe one could possibly put Kang in there. No, but I would. I, I would not yet. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't. I would. When Loki comes Kang. out, it may change. 
Honestly, I don't. He has to be able to kill on the TV show two thousand <laughs> people. Like, I, I'm. I, it, it can't be a situation of like unless they give us a flashback of him destroying a timeline. Then okay, mm -hmm. we get to see it. But if it's just a reference of them talking and we don't see it, I need to see them bodies dead. But, but see, when you say that, I don't even. I don't think it's fair to limit him to just a TV series because I don't think people on the on the movies have been as villainous as he has. Like if we just really think about it, because you have like I, Ultra, Ultra, and Tri, but he didn't, yes. it, he didn't, he didn't succeed. I'm talking about niggas that actually succeeded at what they were trying to, well, get to their point. Because I mean, Thanos, he's he wiped wiped the world, you know, but they came back. We talking about niggas that ain't coming back no more. Like, yeah, I mean, I didn't. I was just like, let me focus on a series. But I was like, if I you want to open it up to the movies, I'm, absolutely. I'm just like, as far as villainous, he he's a him and Killmonger up there. They they killed they killed to get to where they are. Like there there is no you know a lot of the, the villains they was you know, they they people there was casualties they got lost in different things. But he intentionally it was an intention to do this. And like yeah. I don't remember calling them doing. I feel like they tried to, but they got stopped halfway through. Um, yeah. Even in their even in their situation where they one of their people got got murdered by our new cap, whatever they want to call him. No, nah, that what that's not our new cap. That's I mean uh, not no more, not no more. But you know, I mean, U.S. Yeah, agent I mean, that him yeah. that guy, the great value <laughs> cap with no seasoning. <laughs> but I mean, it's just oh, what? Who was you about to say? <laughs> now you can't Civil, even think. Civil War, Civil War, him. Him. That's the only other person that's clear that, that graphic. I don't know if graphic is is as calculated as him. Uh, oh shit, you talking about um He was in, he was in in Captain uh in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh the father. Uh, How are we not remember his name? He not the not the father not the he, father. Uh he was he was in Civil War, he was also in Falcon and them. Yeah, he he the one that turned the the, the Avengers against each other. He He's broke the, the killed, he, he broke he, the Avengers. He killed uh, T'Challa's um, father. father. Yes, yeah, yeah. He he re brainwashed uh, Winter Soldier. So I don't, I don't know them two right there. Them two them they tit for tat. And he killed all the flag smashers at the end. Like he <laughs> he blew them up at the end of uh, uh, Captain America. Uh, no, Falcon and Winter Soldier. He killed them at the end. Zemo. Zemo, yeah. I, I, I had to look yeah. that up. I was just like, Zemo. nah, we gotta, Zemo, we gotta Zemo, drop his name. Zemo up there too. Zemo up there too. I don't like he wasn't as villainous in that, but his character arc the entire time. He's been he's 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 pretty much get everything done he wanted, if you think yeah. about it. And he kept dropping bodies in his daggone around. He even had a body in his tub and still getting breakfast. That's Bro, he crazy. dropped he dropped the body in front of Falcon when they were trying to get the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nah, they cooking. They cooking. Uh, but of course, everybody turned their. I'm not turned, but they pledge allegiance. Everybody pledged allegiance to to Gravity, except Shirley. Um, Shirley, you know, she said we we've lost. It. She basically we lost ourselves uh, in this. And he said we didn't become homeless because they took anything from us. We look at we became homeless because we were too eager to go into a war. And you're just pushing us into another one. Um, but, you know, do you think Gravik... So this is why I say he kind of... I feel like he has either a Lloyd's... Is it, I, th I feel like is I feel like he, he cares for his people. I don't think he... You think he would do something to Shirley if she didn't yes. pay allegiance to him? You think so? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, And then you see it later in this episode. If I, you get in the way of the cause or try wait, to fuck up wait, the mission... Wait. He's getting you out of here. I think if you're down for the cause and you go against it, I don't think if it's like, I don't think she pledged allegiance to what he was trying to do because they didn't want him to go and kill all them people. They, that's what they were mad about. And he told the right. da Daenerys that um, <laughs> I want to see what their faith look like after the, while Rome is still burning. Right. So I don't, I, I mean, we'll see if he goes back against her. I don't, I don't, I personally don't think so, but he's not really, he's, he really can't be trusted. Like, you ask, you, you ask me between Kane and him, now nah, I, Gravik, I really don't trust Gravik. Like, I, yeah, nah. but the other guy he killed, he had to die, Jazz. Come on. 
he didn't have to die. Well, no, he did have to die. He did have to die, but he died for the wrong cause. Nope, excuse me. He died for the wrong reason. What, what, what reason was that? He was blamed for snitching and telling where their safe house was. He didn't do that. That was Breaker of Chains, Emily Gaia mm. did that. Because she was on the phone with the rush, or she was on the phone talking to somebody when they were in there trying to save him. Because he never told Sonya where their safe house was. And hell, who the fuck was Sonya going to call? She was going through the escape uh, door. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, damn, he about to die. And he didn't snitch. Okay, you caught that. Because I, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't sure how that situation um, happened. Yeah. But even within that, just given circumstances, I feel like... <clears throat> Grogan, Grobin, Groban, Groban should have died. That I feel like Groban should have been dead. There wasn't a thing of him being captured, them coming to save him. I feel like if you didn't give up any information, you would have been dead. You would you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have been alive for me to come in here to save you. Yeah, I it just seemed like they went to go save him for no reason. No, they they went to go make sure he was dead. That's that was that's what I think. I think they went there to ensure he if was dead. If that's the case, just kill him. I wouldn't even have took, taken him. I would have just shot him in the head where he was at. Got to they got to go hide. The, I think they want it feel like they didn't want to go put it a, like hide the body type situation cuz I mean it, I guess that's remember, true because when he if you kill him you switch and then you turn into the scroll. You can't you can't leave the scroll. They don't want people to know the scrolls are still they're out so they got to make sure they that's take true. care of their own people. So that's yeah. So I just put it together through this conversation that we was having. So I didn't I didn't think of that or assume yeah. it prior to. Yeah, that's uh Definitely a good point. But um so I, once we oh go ahead. No, you go ahead, you got it. I was gonna say like once we like after Gravik leaves the um council, we see them get back to I guess their main mm -hmm, location. Their main, their, their main spot. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, his people just showing him all kind of love, like everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just so happy. Like, oh, he just killed 20K, folks, whatever. <laughs> Shout out to you, my man. You want a soda? Want a beer? And so we see Gaia moving around real suspicious, which is like the way she's been moving. And then like, this is why I'm like, okay, maybe I can trust her a little bit, but not too much. Because she's doing some sneaky shit. Because we see her getting into... Like she follows what is um Gravik's second his bitch boy? What mm. is his name? Um I don't remember. I don't even remember. I know you I know you're referring to though. We'll call him BB. So BB. <laughs> BB is walking through like their location, and then of course guy is behind him and he goes into like this, like a lab or something similar. And so we're trying to figure out like what is happening here. And she's just like, we can't harvest this. I didn't know what they were talking about, but soon as BB said, Gravik is telling me these locations and they don't have anything that we need. Our fearless, our fearless leader isn't always right. And then the doctor and it was just like, I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that. Like that exchange let me know, all right, BB can't really be trusted like at all. So like, what did you think about this scene? Cause I'm, I think you mentioned like the DNA, like, did you know what the context of this scene was? Um, at first I did not, um, uh, but it was interesting because it, it, it was already brought up twice. So third time's a charm. Now we get it. Fury mentioned it, you know, bringing the, the <clears throat> not getting the Avengers involved because of the, ram the ramifications that can come from it. Um, uh, they asked Gravik in the council meeting. So what if the Avengers get involved? He said, don't worry about that. I, they said, just trust me. I got this. And then, of course, here, you know, I still don't know what they mean, what they're harvesting, what they're trying to create, you know, what they're doing with the DNA. Uh, but then two things happen. Of course, Brockin is captured. He he mentions the conversation and it goes back into this. And then um, Gaia is looking the information up and we see uh, within this information, uh, there's four super power superhumans. You got, you got group. Uh, I don't know if they have, I'm assuming they have group's DNA. Um, I'm sure he system. probably left a, a tree or some <laughs> shit. But like, who picked it up and was like, "This is Groot"? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you got Groot, 
Um, I seen Frost Beast, which was from Thor. I don't know. I don't know oh, when. Shit. I don't know when that was. Then I looked. Was that Thor the Dark? The whole... second one. The second yeah, one. the trash one. Uh, we got Cole Obsidian, which is one of Thanos' children. You told me about that. So that's what that was the third one. And then the extremist is some kind of it's a power form. Now, when I I Googled this, um, and it's it was there's a a an a, an Iron Man arc referring to what the extremist is and how it helped power his suit or something to that um to that so one at this point can assume they're looking to enhance the scrolls at this point. So yeah, they're they're becoming a real threat. At the, well, there there already was a threat, but them becoming enhanced more than what they're already enhanced, like it's really get out of control. Yeah, and which is another reason why I feel like they're giving us so much because this only has this series only has six episodes. I so love I, would, the, I'm, I love their fifty minutes a piece. Like, give me that, give me yeah. all of that, and they're not wasting none of that fifty minutes. No, I wouldn't be shocked if shit went crazy for episode three. Episode three or four. Typically like, three and four. How what what's crazier than one and two? We <laughs> we I mean we can speculate for sure. Be like, who was right? <laughs> um, but of course during this moment, Gaia is kind of careless in her uh secret agency so far. She gets no, well, she didn't get she doesn't get caught per se, but she does almost get caught by Gravik as he's pulling in, which again, I don't think he trusts her, but he kind of puts it out there and lets her know, like your dad or your daddy, your pussy. Uh, <laughs> I'm your saying dad. like, so you just gonna let him call your daddy a bitch? Like, yeah, like they, Gravik is bitching out. He, he, but it's like, I'm the young dude. They the old, they the old guys. Like I'm, I'm the one, like, I love the way he is playing this role. Um, like, Every time he comes, he he's stealing every scene he walks into. It's just like the tension it builds up. Uh, what he's saying, just like I, right, you you got to take everything this man is saying seriously. Um, yeah, and that. and he also doesn't talk much. He does not talk much at all, and a lot of his dialogue either comes from. From what I've been able to gather these past two episodes is when someone asks him a question or say some shit he don't like. <laughs> he don't he don't walk in the room like, hey, good morning, my cult people. He ain't doing all of that. He just like he walked through his people straight his face as they were cheering around him. He just like, the job ain't done. Which it's not, because they ain't got the earth yet. But not finish. And he said he's not stopping until they get it. That's the kind of cult leader you want, though, right? I, if <laughs> if that's your life, somebody dedicated <laughs> to the cause. Yeah, I mean, if you if you dedicated to their life, yeah, you gotta you gotta want that. If I start uh, getting cult emails, I'm be like, all right, I hope y'all motherfuckers <laughs> is subscribed to the pod. <laughs> <laughs> she like she dedicated to the cause, <laughs> or she would be dedicated to our cause. Um, but I guess to let your, your girl Susan. Um, I know you said you didn't really trust her, but I don't. I, I don't. I don't have any reservations for who she is. I don't feel like her. I feel like her and Fury were like. You mean Sonia? Sonia. What I say, Susan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sonia. Sonia. Do you, you know? You, you know. You know the woman. I don't know her name. I, mean, I ain't even write it down. I, don't, I just was like, man, this woman is off the chain. Um, She's becoming my favorite character. Like, of course, you. not over Fury, but like, I'm enjoying I'm, her I'm, character. I'm loving that. Everybody in this series is willing to get their hands dirty. Like it was dope. She pulled up no security, no detail, no nothing. It's just her. Chilling. She just like, um, yeah, here's the phone. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, by the way, where's the escape area in this shithole? Down there? Bet. All right. Get the fuck out of here. Like, they couldn't say nothing. Like, I nah. She bought that life. If yeah. if and when she dies, it's going to be sad. Yeah, she pulled up, you know, she, um, so I guess to be sure, she pulled in with snippers already. Like, there wasn't, she didn't have to go in no bag to grab nothing. She wanted to just make, test the water, she cut the finger off. Oh, yeah, you were scrolling. We, I got you now. But see, also, they, like, Hill and Fury talked about her a lot in the last episode, because they was just like, look, the scrolls don't want Sonya to roll up on them, because she goes in hunting mode. 
And so like when they were talking about that, and I was just like, what the hell are they talking about? Like, oh, she must got a bunch of goons or whatever. No. Sis said, y'all stay at the crib. I want to go fuck him up myself. And like when she put that um, that chemical in him and he mm-hmm. thought he was getting an arm now, she said, I'm, ch- I'm hitting them cheeks. They going in the cheeks. So it works, it it works fast. It works faster. fast. It works a little fast when you. Yeah, get it works faster cheeks. once you get it in the cheeks. But um, and so you start to see it running through his blood. I think it was like what 160 degrees. Well, it was it um, like, of course. It Celsius was it Celsius, right? I don't think it was Celsius. I think it was a different um. But it, it chills. But yeah. it chills you. I think it burns you up. It was 160. Really? Well, gotcha. plus his skin was red as fuck, but then again, <laughs> I don't know. But gotcha. whatever it was doing, he was burning worse than Usher on that <laughs> album. Like, hey, he... you got it. You got it. You got to chill out. You got to chill. Oh. Don't, don't bring Usher for the bird. The but, bird. I know what you meant. But I, the album, you know, confessions. Yeah. But when she was like, "You need to confess these truths to me, so I can go ahead and get the information I need." Seeing it run through his skin, and this is another episode where it kind of feels like this is not a Marvel project because it's dark and it's violent. It's it's for adults. This is for us. This is not for kids at all whatsoever. And she just sitting there like, "So you gonna answer my questions?" And like, dude is burning up. His finger is bleeding, and he's just like. I don't know nothing. She's like, yeah, that's not enough for me. Let me go ahead and get this next needle taken care of. And I was just like, wow. Like, what'd you think about Sonya in this scene? She's a badass. I I appreciated every moment of the scene from when she entered with that. Uh, she was like, did your mama tell you you can put your eye out beating your meat like that? <laughs> <laughs> so from that one liner that she came in to her getting the information that she felt that she needed, like it was and she was in there up until because she knew she didn't have much time like she knew eventually somebody was gonna come to try to extract him um you know from that whole considering that it happened in the beginning of the episode which i love i love those like those little callbacks like you see the man he gets snatched up and it just felt like a a point in the scene to the end it's like oh shit that's the dude that was that got grabbed right too yeah and the fact that she was just like once gravic and bb came in she was like, up, oh, your lift is here. She kicked this man over in his chair. Like, <laughs> I wish she would have just said, bitch, as she kicked him over. <laughs> that would have been so funny. That's the kind no, of villain I would have been. She said, like, I am Sparta. She, that's, that would have been hard, too. Because <laughs> at least that would have been, you know what I'm saying, like, it's, relevant. Like, she would have had her leg up a little bit. And she was like, I am Sparta. And just kick his ass over. And he not really go down <laughs> no big hole, but just tip over. You, she would have died. They would. She wouldn't have got far out of that tunnel. She would have done that whole Man. thing. <laughs> and I, you know, and I guess within that, they were, he was somebody they didn't get any information. But I, it almost like she left it for them to know. Hey, we got I, the information. There's information to to be had, and we have it. Because although you killed these people outside, which also grab it. That boy got hands. He got feet. He's a soldier. You put so between Gravic. And John Wick. I oh, grab it, fucking John Wick, all the way up. Between Gravic and the Punisher, I'm still going grab Gravic. Gravic, he got those. I think he got those extra, the extra. It's the extra oomph in him. He black. I'm rooting for everybody black. Okay, so Gravic and Bruce Wayne, no prep time. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always put me in? I'm not going. I'm not grab it out of here. I'm not going. I'm not going grab. <laughs> I'm not Yo, going grab it. Although I, he, I love, I love that that Michael Myers move. He hung the dude on the hook. I was just yeah. like, dude. Nah, that's that's. Oh, that's Michael and that's Leatherface. Okay, that's yeah, both of them. They both do yeah. that. I don't even have to put the uh, a few seconds later graphic on that when Jason was like, "I'm rooting for everybody black." Soon as Bruce is mentioned, <laughs> "Yo, grab it out of here!" Like. That's crazy. <laughs> um, has there been a darker Marvel entity than Secret Invasion so far? Um, I'm going to say no, not anything that I can remember. 
uh, I this like I like I keep saying this keeps reminding or making me forget it's a Marvel series. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say to me, no. Got you, got you. So I mean, off rip. I mean, I know Guardians three was pretty. I mean, you can you kind of say it was kind of dark. I feel like they had a lot of. I mean, there was there was a few light moments, but overall that was that was kind of dark. Uh, it wasn't. I mean, so if we're looking at Marvel, just Marvel period. The like I said, the Age and the Shields, like they had a few dark seasons when they went into the dark hole, which you, we know what the dark hole. We know we know the, the powers of that one. So that was like when they brought in Ghost Rider, and they also brought in. It was almost a different type of secret invasion, uh, where they did like the AI, uh, where Ada was taking. Where they basically switched all the humans for robots, and they put them inside these like. Um, in these like tombs, um, the entire season, um, until they figured out that they were not robots, they were actually people, um, within that. So that that was that outside of that, the MCU wise, I don't think there has been anything as dark I mean, as this. I guess I wouldn't even put Moon Knight in there. I just think Oscar did an amazing job knowing know that what. you have a character that has like a split personality and going through all the traumatic shit that he had to go through as a kid. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Right. but like outside of that, the villain in that wasn't as dark. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm trying to. I can't think of anybody else. So yeah, I wouldn't be my. I'm not mad at the uh, Guardians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So man, but I'm I'm enjoying it though so far, man. I'm I'm excited to come back to speak with you about it every time. We don't even talk about it in text. We just come right here. Nah. This is, every thought is here. <laughs> We don't. I don't even want to discuss it because I need everything uh, when we come here. Um, of course, we did discuss. You know, well, we find out <clears throat> Fury is married. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit. He's married. Um, we have a try, try a little tenderness. I believe that's Otis Redding. You know, he comes into the house uh, first. Of your I didn't. I'm. I must have. Like I said, it, because it was early in the morning, I must have missed it. I just seen her chopping the food. But this time I seen it, I'm like, wait, who is this green woman chopping up food? Like, right. And then I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! He messing with it, Avia! <laughs> yeah. I think that was a very, that was a really wild twist because I'm just like, okay, Fury been gone from Earth for so many years. Like, Ain't nobody know you had a wife. Like, I mean, but then again, keeping the personal life is definitely something that was rarely mentioned because Hawkeye, we didn't know he had a wife either. Nobody knew he had a wife until they were in Avengers Ult- Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, oh, that's dope. But nah, the trial of tenderness, I was just like, it seems like a, this is our second episode where we got Fury in a scene where there's music playing because when he first linked up with Sonya, he was turning on her record player. And so now in this scene, we have wifey at home making food and you got try a little tenderness playing. So I was just like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, I like she, you know, said, did you forget something? Got you. Put that ring back on his finger. Um, but also Maria kind of alluded to it. She was like, I'm not the person you got to talk to. I'm not the only one that you left in that first episode. And you know that's when, so it makes sense as to who or what she was talking about. Now that we see, mm-hmm. yeah, ooh, it's crazy when you go back and look, because a lot of those earlier episodes, and this isn't the only show that has done it. A lot of Marvel episodes do do it, <laughs> to where you go back and you do rewatches, you you hear stuff in like regular conversation you didn't think mattered, mm-hmm. and then later on you just be like, oh wow, that was a reference that they were. Uh... It, Right, so I was like, uh, "Damn!" Uh, I think before we do the next one, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna rewatch Captain Marvel one, two, because you catch you just catch little bitty things each episode, and like I said, they, they, these definitely re- reward a rewatch um, and watching them. But did you have anything else within this episode, the Marvel universe, or anything that you wanted to address or discuss? I definitely um, have a question. Do you think? we'll get a flashback or some type of visual of what happened to uh, Tal- Talos' wife because okay. this is 
like this is the second episode that's been mentioned. I'm like, um, and I also need to know how long between when Fury got back from the blimp or Tony's funeral to when he left. Like, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if we ever get the real picture or clarity with Tony. I mean, with with Fury when he left. I mean, it's a possibility. Because that's a big thing within this, what happened. I feel like the come with him and his wife being together because of all these conversations have been super intimate. I feel like that that conversation will come up because if you let you you just left your wife on Earth, like she's not even from here, and you went another place like without her, like I feel like that 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 would need to a conversation would need to be had. Um, about that, and as far as with Talos, man, I'm uh, he he's third on my list right now because I don't like. I feel like Talos. I think his intention is good, but I don't know what his intentions are anymore. Like, I don't know because his his daughter is there, so I don't know. If, I mean, he, is it to really pull her closer to him, or what? I don't know what his intentions are, and it's just I don't know. I think it's just to stop grab it. Because he might blame Gravik for his wife's death. So it could be a possible thing of revenge because I know when he had called um, the Madam Priestess that Gravik let get away and she immediately called Shirley. Uh, Cheryl. Shirley. All their names start with S's. Um, <laughs> but she like called him and he was just like, let's set up a meet. And she was just like, uh, he's going to kill you. So it's just some anger there but because i know you mentioned like he might be on like a suicide mission so i'm curious where we're gonna see with that and at what point is uh gaia going to fully flip because i think she's kind of like on the fence right now but um a lot of people think she's gonna replace uh replace you maria she's gonna replace maria to be like fury second Second in command, correct. I mean, there's a possibility, but I, I mean, I don't know. She could fight. A, yeah. Um. Why didn't go to? I mean, so does Fury know the Guardians? Because why didn't go? He didn't send them to nowhere. Never seen Fury and the Guardians on the same in the same, same place, scene, except the funeral. Except the funeral. I feel but like at they, that point, like. It's over with. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like I feel like nowhere is a great place for them. Well, I, I, well, I say I say that that may that, this it's a million of the motherfuckers. I don't know, but they could yeah, they, they could be they still. They kind of need their own space. Like build a motherfuckers a spaceship. I mean, I don't know. Do you think we're going to get a appearance from Captain Marvel in this? Like I, I think we would definitely see Carol, even if it's in a flashback or maybe in a post think, credit at the end. I think we're going. I think we 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 would probably see um, Monica and Carol at some point. I think right. it'll, it'll probably be both. Consider how it made because <clears throat> this is supposed to lead into their their series. So I think it's one of them or something, you know, of that sort. Possibly even. Uh, Miss Marvel. What's it? Is it Miss Marvel? Yeah, Kamala. Yeah, you may even Kamala may show up or something. And plus, I mean, every series that we've gotten where the character was connected to others, we've had a cameo. But nobody has said anything about a possible cameo for this series, which I'm glad. And I feel like they haven't been promoting this series as much as they was promoting like Moon Knight. You don't think so? Shit. No, nah. I, I, I don't. I don't think people knew what it was. Though I think they just seen Sam, Secret they Invasion. It was, they, it was just Samuel Face and Secret Invasion because even people that love Marvel were like, I don't know what the hell. I just kept seeing Sam Face, like. But I'm also knowing or noticing because of the writer strike, they don't do late night TV show no more. Right, that's true. That's true. So they can't. So they're unable to promote it the way we traditionally would. So. Outside of people looking for it, which is us, or but see, like on social media, which is I'm a, I gotta challenge you on that because we've seen very great marketing from movies. Marvel can definitely do the same for I their mean, shows. So I've, I've seen marketing for it. Like there's been 
like different news stations with people that dressed up as scrolls. Like it, things have been going on. Yeah, look that up. They, there's people that's they, they're promoting it, but like I don't know how much more promoting can actually go into it, and I don't know how much of the writer strikes has has to do with that. Because I feel like a lot of things haven't been promoted the way I think it te- technically would. <clears throat> and a lot of stuff. Remember, we at one point we were seeing like movies and stuff in sporting. And sports are over right now, like the bigger sports. Are you saying baseball's not big? Shit, are they in? Are they in their season? Or are they in spring training? I feel like baseball's going on right now because hockey just finished. So normally around the summer you got baseball. But I mean, are they in their spring training though? Are they? Still you gotta ask them niggas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying because remember, like they they did um smile. They had the people in the crowd of all these sporting events and things. And like that, that was during baseball. When did that bum ass movie drop? That bum ass movie dropped like August of last year. So they had to. The writing. Oh yeah, so they was probably promoting it June July. Mm-hmm. So I, they be- look. If y'all need me to dress up as a scroll, I got you. <laughs> I got you. I'll go to Comic Con in my scrolls outfit. What? I need some some Snapchat filters or something. People, I don't know. I, I, I feel you... like it is, I feel like it is being promoted, but I mean, I know people. I, I've had people like you say they didn't know or they weren't sure what was going on. Yeah, I mean, because it's funny because my best friend called me today and we was talking about episode one. I was like, "Oh shit, you watched?" She said, "Girl, yeah." Because she was just like, that little girl from episode one, she was like, what little girl be walking around at night by themselves with a damn Pennywise ball? Yo, <laughs> weak as fuck. I was like, that's true. I just thought it was a random little white girl, but it was probably a scroll. Or hey, no, we don't know if she was a scroll <clears throat> or not. Somebody said, be on your Will Smith time. Will Smith seen a little white girl. He put one between the eyes. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> You say, I mean, <laughs> shit, you see him, he hanging out. He ain't doing nothing. He ain't bothering nobody. But the little white girl, she got a ball. She is in a, in, a, in an alley at night. She up to no good. She got to be. Yo, you right. You was right. Damn. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> but uh, quickly, let's uh go ahead and talk about the Fury and Rhodey conversation, unless you already made your points on that. I feel like we didn't really get to talk about that too much. We kind of referenced it. But we um, didn't go too much into it. I think we can. We definitely can. Um, pull this back up. Yeah. So Rhodey and Fury. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I already, I already, I, I don't know if Fury. I don't know if Rhodey is a scroll, but I feel like the show is is playing really big into that. Like whether is it a scroll or is it just somebody that don't know if you're a scroll. So everybody is playing this defensive mode of who is this person, who is this. Um, but in, he, I'm gonna say I can't say he read he read Fury, um, but to a certain extent it was just like he not played his hand, but he is playing his position within that. Like at this point, I'm the one in control of this situation, or I have you know more power of it. And you know he kind of told him because of who you are and the admiration I have and the respect for you, I don't want it to be to come off a way because I'm the one that terminated you. I'm like, did you think it was messed up when uh, Rhodey was just like, they didn't put me up to this. I volunteered. Like, can you imagine somebody that you've been down with for years talking about, oh, I'm, I volunteered to come and fire you. I thought that was kind of fucked up. Kind of, nah, that was fucked up. Like, Because I'm just sitting here like, we don't have that many black males in the MCU that much. I mean, like, the main ones, you got Fury, you got Rhodey, and then you got Cap, Black Cap, mm-hmm. R.I.P. T'Challa. Um, and so, you just, like, now you got two main ones that's been there kind of, like, somewhat to day one, and they're at odds. So, I was just like, is this Rhodey? Man, it's a but, tough one. <laughs> it's a t- I mean, it's a, it's a tough position, and as a viewer, it's even tougher because you don't know, and, like, for somebody that tried to think ahead it's like man is this or is it not is it or is it not right because you sit up here and be like okay they're not and these are the reasons why then episode three drop and you just like shit everything that i thought was one thing it was a complete lie yeah yeah i like the call back they brought up alexander pierce from winter soldier which that was um he was the one that would that him and fury 
he was the one that tried that that it was Hydra within the, yes uh, within within the crew, which that that shifted Agent of Shield TV show the power um, in this series as well. So yeah, it's always a a, a, a secret invasion going on somewhere um, within. And I'm gonna seem like the organization that Fury is a part of, like, so, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I, I I get it. I I definitely get you know where Rhodey coming from, but I can also see Rhodey being a scroll as well. So right. I, I I I mean, hope if that's the biggest, I think that'd probably be the biggest scroll that we could. I mean, possibly. I don't know who else we could see that could be a scroll. We'd be like, oh my god, what? I think the president possibly could be one. But he gonna die. <laughs> the president? I mean, because you know, Ross R- Thunderbolt Ross has to become president. So either he's a scroll and he gets killed, or he's a human and, and they gonna take him out of there to put Ross. Which, thank you, thank you. That bring up my other point. What if boom, 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 boom. all this is a mission from Val? Like, what if Val was? behind or being in control too because you gotta remember like she's playing into influence into power and eventually she's gonna be a big person like it's it's. I think all these things are culminating to make a situation so Thunderbolt Ross it will eventually become president even if it's them taking credit for saying hey we're the ones that took the scrolls out we the one that did this I'm the one that did that and Harrison Ford is the president He Harrison Ford is Thunderbolt Ross RIP to the original Thunderbolt Ross because he did pass away. So Harrison Ford coming in and he's not gonna be he's not not gonna be a big person when they come. He's gonna be the Red Hulk when he comes into this. So just imagine the 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 story or that's gonna come with it. But that was just that that was just a thought I had. Like what if Val them is behind this invasion? Like they I put mean, this, this in in their heads. That's extremely risky because I. I don't know, but I think she's involved in some form or fashion, but I don't think she's on that level of involvement yet. Because then we also, who was the uh, folks that Sharon was uh, working with? Her. Val? So she was working with Val. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was a totally different entity or not, but I think we might see Val. (sighs) I think it makes sense. Anything grounded, it'll make sense for Val to be in. Like the last time, oh, well, the last movie we seen him in was, you know, Wakanda Forever, Black Panther, which we seen the last time we seen Ross um, within this. So it, I mean, it is is they're 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 trying to jazz. They are trying to push a big agenda. So even with the um, they trying to event, they go. I think they're gonna push the people into Wakanda to try. This gonna be a big fight between. Um, Tim, they're gonna push the people to fight the Wakandans to take the vibranium. All right, I don't know about that. Leave Wakanda alone. They just you got... don't know about it. They said it in the movie. Well, no, no, no. I mean, like, I don't, I don't think another battle is coming to what Wakanda. You should watch. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see. She, Leave them folks alone, man. They they're trying to get their army that, up. That's what she want to do. I know she wants to get the vibranium. How's she gonna get it without a war? But see. The Thunderbolts. They have a movie coming. That's I, I in like that's sixteen safe. years. It come right after uh Cap Four. In like seventeen years. Next sixteen, year. fourteen. May of twenty. Well, it's actually. I thought it got pushed. It's August twenty twenty four of next year though. So you're right because I'm I'm thinking Deadpool is first. Deadpool is what leads off next year. So Deadpool is going. to Are kill, you sure? Deadpool is killing the Marvel universe, and then well, I'm gonna say I say that now because. They do have the um because of the writer strike. I'm I don't know how that, but you can look it up. Look it up real quick. It's, we it's do get good. Deadpool in 2024 in May, and then Cap is in yes August now because it was actually in August. I think it was in May, and then Deadpool was actually at the, at earlier in the year. Damn, I think it's gonna be six months. I think we'll get the Marvel in November, and then we'll get Deadpool. In May, that's if. Hold as on. Long, as long as everything stays the right. way it is. Right. Okay. We do get the marbles this year. Okay, that's true. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. We'll see how it go. A lot of theories. A lot of theories. We'll see. I don't, I don't know. That's that's more theorizing. Me talking. Me nerding out within this, man. 
but I'm excited. I'm enjoying it. This roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add for this episode? I did not. Did you have anything that you wanted to address? No, I think I was able to discuss all of my random points. Uh, Gravic <laughs> is just. Whew. Let's see if he kills some more people. Get him out of here, Gravic. Get him all out of here. <laughs> um, but again, man, this is our episode two um, of Secret Invasion. We're discussing the promises given by Fury that he didn't hold up to and how Gravic is, is scoring. Fury said, y'all, I got zapped out of here and I had to come back. I wonder if his, well, I guess it don't matter if his wife got blipped too. Nah, we don't do, even know that. Do scrolls get, do, did, do, did scrolls get blipped? What? I mean, I don't know. It wasn't mentioned and we haven't seen anything that happened during that time. It's only referenced. So, yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, look, if you come into our planet, you need to deal with our planet ass issues. <laughs> which means 50% <laughs> had to die. I'm just saying. Man, so that's Can you like, imagine the, him doing the snap and it's just like going through the parameters like scroll. Nah, you survive. Human, you're out of here. Like that's crazy. I mean, So I guess only co- maybe only cosmic entities wouldn't get blipped. Like that's the only one that, I mean that would be exempt from it. Why would I mean Groot he's got blipped. Entity. He's not a cosmic entity. What is a cosmic entity, Jason? Uh, the Eternals, those type of people. Uh, we don't ego, know. Ego, or do we? We do. They didn't get blipped. Remember, they um. They was also they're also his siblings and cousins. I... <laughs> so he might be <laughs> like, said, "Don't kill they, my family." And in, in the Eternals type thing, like they didn't, they would. I don't think they would go. Like you know, but I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that how that was as completely random. But you know this series really getting into. Do you how... think? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. You go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say like because this is the first time we're back on Earth. Do you think we'll get any type of reference to the Eternals? Because we got them like two years ago. You have a giant statue coming out of some ice. Robot, um, whatever the fuck. I think they're gonna probably turn that into something. I think they'll try to turn it into some kind of base or something at some point. But who is they? What a oh. Val and her people up there. Mm, it's a possibility. Um, I feel like they were ever the um, that black site where they put the Avengers at the end of Civil War and they had to break them out. I think that's where they get. Yeah. That would be cool to get an Eternals um, reference because we haven't we haven't really heard somebody. One. We haven't heard anybody speak about it. There's been Easter eggs to it, like on the news and stuff and clippings, but there hasn't been an actual conversation. You're right. We haven't spoken about that at all. I'm like, what's going on, y'all? But hopefully, Danny might hit up hit up Jon Snow and he'll tell him what's going on. I feel like I should want to see that, <laughs> but <laughs> it's it not sense really. Make sense. I mean, it could. There's a possibility it could make sense, but I'd just be like. So if Jon Snow was just in the, if Jon Snow just popped up at like a coffee shop, the Nary just getting some coffee, and they just a little like brief, pass like, each other, don't even brief. speak. I mean, they they would walk. They just you know, hey, how you doing? Just keep moving. I'm not gonna lie, that would be fucking crazy, for the simple fact of there was no not much dialogue, and it's just them passing each other. That could be dope. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like that would be dope. Cause you sitting here like last time I saw those two, he was holding her dead body after killing her, and then her dragon came and scooped her up. And the fact that he was in a movie that we haven't seen in like two years, and Blade is supposed to come out in three Wait, years. Because I believe he's a it's not twenty twenty four too. Blade, I don't think so. It might be 2025. 2025. Okay. So, which I think that's the next time we probably can expect to see him. That could be dope. Just something as small as that. But I feel like something like that, we'd probably see a picture of them on set with each other before the episode drops, and then it just destroys the entire I've been, surprise. Um, I've been ducking and dodging all those things here, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. 
But that's all I had. I ain't have nothing else. Got you, got you. But again, this is the Was It Good Though podcast, Secret Invasion, episode two. We would like to thank those who listen, who follow, who's been chatting. Um, we're going to talk about the followers. I'm oh, not follow, but the subscribers. Yes. Achievement. Oh, Looks Go like ahead. Shots, but I ain't got no liquor. Oh, shit. I, I ain't got no liquor. We can do our shots uh, for our episode dropping on Tuesday. Because I definitely ain't got no liquor. Got you. Got you. So, yes, appreciate y'all for subscribing. Please, again, share, comment, let the people know. You know, um, view podcasts. We appreciate y'all. I appreciate Jazz uh, for joining. Uh, when we can, we shit just been putting these bitches out left and right. Let me, we've been putting these things out left and right uh, here lately, and it's just been, uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. So, hey, I appreciate you, ma'am. I appreciate you as well. Of course, you know every time we drop an episode, get a stack. <laughs> deposit it you know what i'm saying like out here rich <laughs> jason what you want to pot about today don't matter nigga <laughs> it's going plug out it tomorrow plug it up plug it up <laughs> but nah it's been good it's been good it's damn this will be the third episode this week look who working as hard working and this don't even feel like work Niggas don't be working like we, how we be working. You know what I mean? Come on. Three episodes on a week. Let's go. But y'all ain't getting this shit next week, just to let you know. <laughs> don't think you about to get three episodes next week or the week after that. <laughs> nah, player. <laughs> Psych your mind. Who? <laughs> yeah, man. But again, this is the Was It Good Though podcast. We do appreciate y'all for listening. Have a nice one. Deuces. Cheers. Thank you.